Contrary to popular belief, snowmobiling is about more than lightweight, perfect ride and trail shredding handling. Yes, these things are absolutely the cornerstones of an excellent day on the trail. But more important than any one of these things, my opinion is that a sled has to fit the rider well and feel great. If a sled fits you perfectly and feels exactly how you want a sled to feel, many other undesirable traits seem to just melt away. And that's how it is with the Yamaha Nitro. Individual characteristics aside, I feel like this sled was made for me, and therefore, I absolutely love riding it. For starters, this is the four-stroke motor. It's got bottom end grunt in spades, and it's got enough top end pull to please even the most speed addicted rider. If I could, I would record the exhaust note of this motor on my sleep sound generator. Basically, it purrs and growls like a bipolar tiger. At only 1,049 cc's, this two valve, three cylinder, fuel injected four banger could definitely be described as an overachiever if we didn't expect so much from Yamaha. Yamaha is a company that is self-described as first and foremost, a motor manufacturer. In terms of performance, the Nitro lacks nothing compared to any other 120 to 130 horsepower sled on the market. But if part of your reasoning behind buying a four stroke is fuel efficiency or fuel mileage, the Nitro may not be the wisest choice. Sure, it's more efficient than a carb two stroke of the same horsepower, but it simply doesn't have the sparse appetite of today's direct injected engines. And with its smallish gas tank, it's not a good idea to pass a fuel stop if you still have some miles to go. With that said, it's hard to find a sled that's ergonomically as comfortable for a larger rider than the Nitro. At 6'1", I fit into the tall guy category, and I find the Nitro so comfortable, I'll trade almost any other positive attribute of another sled for the ergonomic perfection that is the Nitro cockpit. The seat is shaped to hold you on the sled, like a racing bucket seat in a car as opposed to a bench seat in a minivan. The bars are quite high, but because the rider's positioned upright, they never feel out of reach. Seat to foot well spacing is on the shorter side, but because of the way it's laid out, my knees never feel cramped, and the overall package is designed in a way to allow the rider to move around when the riding gets aggressive. Furthermore, the ergonomics of the Nitro are as good when standing as they are when you're seated. And with the large nose and upper pod area under the handlebars, wind protection is actually not bad, especially now that the SE Nitro RTX is shipped with an actual windshield, as opposed to the old bug deflector it used to come with standard. The RTX version of the Nitro is fully jammed from top to bottom, but the biggest improvement you're gonna get for the extra green new shell out is definitely the shock package. And from the very beginning, I was no fan of air shocks, especially the ones from Fox, but over the past few seasons, Fox has taken huge steps in improving their entire air shock lineup. And these Float X piggybacks up front are excellent. All aluminum and featuring adjustable compression and rebound through thumb wheel clickers, the Fox Float X piggybacks are only a couple steps down from what you'd find on the front of a Pro Class Snowcross sled. Simply put, if you can't find a way to adjust these shocks to your liking, you have no business adjusting shocks. Out back, Yamaha has spared no expense in the ride department. The standard Yamaha dual shock skid is tricked out with sweet, fully adjustable HPG piggyback rear arm and equally adjustable remote reservoir front arm shocks. Honestly, this is one of the most impressive suspension packages we've ever seen spec'd on a stock trail sled. And while the range of adjustment does reside on the stiffer end of the spectrum, this sled can be set up for smooth trail riding or hardcore ditch banging with nothing more than a quick spin of a clicker knob. And one of the biggest complaints most test riders have about any Nitro we've ever possessed has been the handling. And while Yamaha continues to improve on the original Nitro front suspension design, recent aftermarket offerings have shown quite graphically that the weakest link in the Nitro handling chain may very well be the skis. If you spend a few days on a Nitro, you can get used to its tendency to push on initial entry into a corner and then bite aggressively and lift its inside ski. If you're a bigger rider like me, you can actually learn to muscle these traits into the ground. But if you're the type of rider who just wants an excellent handling experience right from the get-go, the answer is certainly a pair of split rail skis. This new ski technology is the best solution to any handling issues that may be present with a Nitro. 
And if you're a current or future owner of a sled with this chassis, consider a set of split rails simply part of the cost of ownership, not as an optional expense. Overall, my time spent on a Nitro is always good. Not necessarily because it's the lightest weight, the best handling, or the most powerful. Simply because it provides the fit and feel I'm looking for in a performance trail sled. You know what they say, the sled fits, ride it.